Mac Voices is supported by LinkedIn Jobs. Find the right person for your business today with LinkedIn Jobs. Pay what you want and get $50 off your first job post at linkedin.com slash Mac Voices. Welcome to Mac Voices. This is the talk of the Apple community, and I'm Chuck Joyner. And folks, this is an interview that I wish we didn't have to do, but I think it's the right thing. I have Mike Potter, the organizer of MacStock, back with me to chat about the cancellation of MacStock. Mike, it's good to see you. I wish it wasn't under these circumstances. Hi, Chuck. It's great to see you, too. And uh, yeah, you kind of stole my line. I was planning on coming on and saying, uh, this is not really the way I wanted to come on Mac, uh, Mac Voices again. But uh, unfortunately, it's the way I have to come back on to Mac Voices. Yeah, well, and of course, we are talking about the fact that Mac stock will not ha- happen this year. Um, yeah. And I wanted to, I, I felt it was important because you and I have had a couple conversations. I wanted to get get you on and let some of the audience and some of our friends from Mac stock kind of f- see what was behind your thinking on this. Because I really do think you're, you're doing the right thing, even though I don't want it to be. I think it is the right thing. Yeah, you know. None of us want this to be the case, uh, no matter what's getting canceled on you or what's happening in, in your own community at home. None of us want this to be happening. Um, but it, I have received, since I sent out the cancellation letter that I sent last Saturday, I have received so many warm, welcoming messages from people in the MaxDoc community, which doesn't surprise me. Uh, Janet, my wife, has said so many times that the folks who come to MacStock are some of the nicest people in the world. And to a T, everyone has understood. Everyone accepts um, uh, how we're handling the postponement and just have been incredibly generous with um, their well wishes and um, in in some cases sharing uh, what's going on with them and uh, how, how much that helps them understand uh, the decisions that we had to go through to decide to postpone Mac stock. So, and that's one of the things I wanted to ask you to cover a little bit. Um, you know, at some point it pushed you over the edge to, to the cancellation. What, what, what <laughs> yeah. pushed you over the edge, Mike? Um, uh, a lot of stuff pushes me over the edge, Chuck. Yeah. <laughs> but, <laughs> well, no, this is not but, therapy, Mike. What, <laughs> or maybe what it is. pushed me over the edge? Um, uh, no. Um, so, when the state of Illinois and the state of New York and the state of California uh, were some of the early states to issue shutdown orders, to issue mandates that ask people to stay at home, um, and then it started to snowball from there. But when when Illinois did that, um, I kind of looked at where we were. This was sometime around uh, early early March. Uh, I believe, or we were close to to having the mandate issued in Illinois at that time. And I realized I needed to do two things. I needed to come up with a COVID-19 response plan so that people who come to MacStoc, uh, should it be held in July, were going to know that I was doing everything I could do to make sure that they were safe and happy and healthy uh, when they do come out to it. So I came up with a 10-point plan for MacStoc 2020. And uh, here's here's what I'm going to do to make sure that that, that things are handled safely. Uh, Some of the issues uh, that I covered include things like capping attendance, making sure that the breakout rooms are only 50% populated, uh, making sure that the volunteers are all uh, trained and educated on how to not only recognize symptoms, but how to handle a situation um, should someone uh, suddenly become sick at MaxDoc. Uh, you know, I had to come to the realization that someone may leave home, no matter where home is, they may leave home completely symptom free. And by the time they come to MaxDoc, be developing symptoms. That's how quickly this can happen for someone. So all this was swirling around in my head. But point 10 on that COVID-19 response plan, which is still uh, it was 10 points that I came up with, and I will fully admit that I, I did crib some of them from uh, local health organizations, from international health organizations, and also from other conferences. I was looking at what they were doing and how best to respond to this uh, as MaxDoc. But point 10 was develop a postponement plan. I wanted people to know that I wasn't going to push forward with MaxDoc if it wasn't the right thing to do. 
And that's what I promised everyone. Everyone who buys a ticket to MaxDoc is essentially promised by me that I'm going to do right by them. Whether there's a, a global pandemic going on or not, if it's a, a regular old year of MaxDoc, I'm going to do right by them. And uh, that's the promise I make to people when they buy a ticket. And I wanted to make sure I fulfilled that promise. And I wanted folks to know that if it comes to it, I will postpone it. Um, so that's what I did. And so at this time, I developed this 10-point plan. Here's what we're going to do if MaxDoc is held. And kind of behind the scenes, I started working on, here's what I'm going to do if I have to postpone it. Postpone it. And it was it was very <laughs> um, as as fine fine tuned as my COVID ten response plan was. What I was going to do if I had to postpone was still pretty loosey goosey at that time. I was jotting down ideas. I was trying to come up with you know how I can make it up to people if I have to postpone it. How I'm going to handle it if I have to cancel it. Things like that. Um, but I didn't have it locked in. I wasn't quite sure where I was, but this was, this was March 11th. You know, I mean, we were, we were just, um, a few days into March. Um, the, I've said this a few times and the thing that blows my mind is that at the time I was, I was writing all this, we were just barely over two months from the beginning of the new year from all celebrating new year's day. Happy new year. Happy 2020. And we were still a little over four months away from MaxDoc. So we weren't even halfway to MaxDoc yet. So this was, it, it, it's, everything is so filled with uncertainty, you know? And um, I just, I wasn't sure at that time where we we're going to be, but I, ha I knew I had to start developing a plan. So that's what I did. And as the weeks went on, and uh, in some cases, things took a turn for the better. In some cases, things took a turn for the worse. In many cases, things took a turn for the worse. Um, a, about a week prior to my announcement of the postponement, I had an email from the conference center. They needed to know, am I going to host MaxDoc or not? And that's when I shared with them some of my uh, postponement plan ideas. But I was also stuck at that time with, do I reach out to potential potential sponsors, past and new sponsors alike? Do I reach out to caterers for Saturday night's evening event? Do I reach out to the speakers who I, I knew who was going to be selected, but do I tell them they're selected when there's a very good chance that we're not even going to have this conference and they start preparing their talks and suddenly it's not happening? You know, so there's all this stuff I had I had to think about. But as I was responding to the conference center, I, I decided that I was going to create two milestone dates. The, and this was, keep in mind, this was a week prior to when I, I made the announcement of the postponement, but I decided there were going to be two milestone dates. One was going to be April 25th, which was three months prior to MaxDoc, and one was going to be May 25th two months prior to MaxDoc. I, I have had in my head that the latest I could go without making a final determination was May 25th. I had to give people enough time to change their plans. I had to give enough people time to cancel reservations. I had to give people enough time to um, get refunds on their flights or, or you know, whatever they had to do to get to MaxDoc I had to make sure people had enough time to take care of that. So those were my two milestone dates. And I, I figured, you know, if things take a turn for the worse, then I would just announce on April 25th that max stock is going to be postponed. If we make it past that milestone date, I figured, okay, if, if we make it to May 25th and things are markedly better, then maybe we could host it as long as I could assure a safe environment for everybody. Um, but if things were not markedly better by May 25th, I would just have to postpone it. Uh, and and that that I knew was the latest I could go. And and I took a lot of guidance for that, like I said, from the World Health Organization, from CDC, from McHenry County Department of Health, but also from the attendees. 
also from other conferences. Uh, I follow very closely what the smaller regional conferences were doing. I follow very closely what non-tech conferences were doing. And I was following what large events were doing. Uh, things like WordCamp Asia was canceled very early in the game. They were canceled in February or March. Uh, and they weren't to be held until May. I don't remember the dates now. But, uh, you know, I was watching what the larger events were doing. And I was even watching what things like the Olympics were doing. Uh, when the Olympics said, hey, you know, we're, we're postponing to 2021, I went, okay, so I'm not the Olympics. <laughs> I'm not close to the Olympics. <laughs> I'm not close to the planning that has to go into something the size and scope of the Olympics. But when they can't pull it off and assure that everybody who's going to be uh, attending the Olympics is safe, smaller conferences need to really take notice. Um, things like South by Southwest canceling. That was painful to hear about um, and what they went through and the staff they had to lay off and all these kind of things. This is a big problem. Uh, and this isn't news. This is a big problem throughout the, the, the entire conference and event industry. What do we do? There's so many unknowns when we can't make plans because we just don't know what's going to happen next week, let alone tomorrow. <laughs> what do we do? And so it became increasingly clear uh, that as people were asking me and reaching out and just saying, uh, not even telling me because of COVID-19 or, or anything, they were just saying they wanted a refund. That was telling me, I, I, it's not, it's not, whether these scenarios I came up with in my head should play out, it was, or, or could play out, it was whether they should play out. I think that's how I phrased it. Should they play out? Should I wait until April 25th? Should I wait until May 25th? And the answer was no. I need to make the decision now. And uh, as, as I mentioned, everyone has been incredibly uh, generous with their understanding. Um, when, I, when I laid out what the plans were for next year, um, I just, I, I wanted people to know that I just couldn't look at this any longer as whether the, the pandemic would be over by July 25th. I have to look at the longer lasting implications of the, the, you know, the effect of this pandemic on everybody, um, their, their personal safety, their financial stability. Uh, even if, if the pandemic is over, can people afford to travel to Max Um, you know, people are losing their job every day. You know, I, I have to look at this kind of stuff. I have to look at people who are coming from Europe and Australia and Canada and other countries that are completely locked down right now. Can they even make it? There are travel restrictions right now. How long are those travel restrictions going to last? So these are the kind of things that not only I had to think about, but every single event planner out there has to think about. And it's um, I've been following a lot of the, the news in the conference and event industry, which I'll be honest, I, I don't really follow all that closely until this year. And I and I really wanted to see what others were doing. But I felt like in the end, uh, personal health and safety was important. Financial stability was important. But m more importantly, it was just doing the right thing. And that was the final determiner is doing the right thing, making sure that everyone was going to be safe and that they were going to be able to come back together to MaxDoc, which is very much a community event that depends upon that face-to-face in-person um, uh, interactions that we have, that they, they could feel safe and I could give them that warm and welcoming environment that people want every year. That was the final determiner uh, to decide to postpone Max Talk to next year. This edition of Mac Voices is supported by LinkedIn Jobs. Finding good people for your business is harder than ever, and that's why you should use LinkedIn Jobs to fill that difficult to fill position. LinkedIn Jobs not only gets you the candidates with the right technical skills, but also with the right soft skills so that they match your requirements perfectly. LinkedIn is the world's largest professional network. Isn't that where you want to be looking for your next hire? Of course it is. With LinkedIn Jobs, you don't waste time interviewing people who aren't qualified or aren't what you're looking for. 
That's why, somewhere, a person is hired every eight seconds with LinkedIn Jobs. Find out more about how LinkedIn Jobs can help you with your next hire at linkedin.com slash macvoices. Pay what you want and save $50 off your first job post. That's linkedin.com slash macvoices to save $50 off your first job post. Thanks to LinkedIn Jobs for their support of Mac Voices. So many things you've said there. I, I've, I, I think that a lot know, of us. I'm sorry. No, 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 no. I, th- I think a lot of us, you know, f- from our personal standpoint as attendees, you know, we want to come. We want to come. We don't want it to be canceled. Can't you wait, Mike? Can't you wait another week? Can't you wait and see? Maybe, maybe it'll get better by, you know, f- May first. Maybe it'll get better by June first, and we can still do it. And we all forget that there are the issues on the other side of the conference center, of the of the of the meal planning, the restaurants, the hotels, all those things. And I applaud you for thinking about you know the the fact that a lot of us you know obviously now will have to be canceling um, flights and and hotels and you know my my personal trip is not that not big a deal Pennsylvania Chicago not a big deal but. Yeah, from Europe, much bigger deal. People that spend two yeah. or three days on the road to come to Max Stock that drive from the Midwest. They do. You know, yeah. that that's a big deal. So, you know, thank you for, for thinking about all of those things. The fact that you even had, you know, even a contingency plan for folks that, you know, should they get sick there? I mean, that's something that, yeah. again, a lot of us wouldn't even think about. It just, okay, I, I'm going to assume that everybody that's coming is going to be healthy. Well, you know. Maybe, maybe not. And if right. not, then you needed to be prepared. So th- these are all, you know, I I hated to get that email, but I was kind of relieved too because I know that the kind of burden you were you were carrying. And I think this just now, we all go back, we regroup, we follow all the, the guidelines, we get past this thing and move on to 2021, which is my way of segueing, segueing into letting you talk about how you're handling um, – the I guess moving Max Stock 2022, Max Stock 2021 for those of us who have purchased tickets. Right. So this was a big part of the postponement plan. What what am I going to do? Is this going to be just a straight out cancellation? Some of the organizations that are out there recommend to their sub organizations, their regional organizations, they say, do not announce a postponement announce a cancellation, give everybody their money back. Uh, And some, many were postponing. So again, it was kind of taking guidance from what other conferences were doing and especially smaller conferences, what are they doing? But it also came down to what do I want to do for the attendees? How can I thank them for their patience with my postponement, thank them for their understanding that I have to do this, what can I do for them to, to make it up to them? And the, the very first thing that came to my mind, and this has been on my head for, on my head, this has been in my head for about three days, or three, uh, three days. See, I'm already losing it, Chuck. My, my Mac stock brain, I, I develop a bad case of Mac stock brain from January through August. It's like, that's the only thing that's on my brain. That's how much, you know, I did a little bit in fall the year before, but Boy, from January through August, Janet, my wife, has said I have a very, very bad case of Mac stock brain, and something's going on up there right now. I'll tell you. But I, what I wanted to do is I wanted to make it up to people, and from the very get go, uh, one of the notes I took, I told you I was scrolling down some random notes and things like that for what I would do if I had to postpone, was I want to expand Mac stock to three days. People have been asking for three days for a few years now, and it wasn't necessarily something I n- knew how to approach two or three years ago. You know, people just, they wanted more. But on the other hand, folks always said, well, yeah, I'd like more, but, you know, it's always great to know I'm going to have more the next year, right? But this year, I wanted to make sure I gave them more. You're, you're putting up with me, you're, you're, um, you're, you're understanding that we have to postpone is uh, super important to me, and I want to make it up to you. So Max Doc 2021 is going to be three days instead of two. And one of the best things about that for me is that I get to accept more of the wonderful presentations and talks that were submitted to me than I could accept 
if we were hosting it in July this year. So I'm super excited about that. I, I'm I'm ready to present as many of the folks, and we had so many fantastic submissions this year, as many of the folks who, who submitted their talks as possible will be on the stage next year at MaxDoc. Um, so yeah, we're, we're targeting Friday, July 23rd. I have to make sure I get the dates right through Sunday, July 25th. It's the same fourth weekend of the month that we've kind of standardized on for MaxDoc. Um, and while I can't lock in the dates yet, the conference center won't let me lock them in until July or August this year. They have to do it within a year of it. So I can't lock them in, but they're aware of those dates. They've made a note of them. And I'm targeting uh, Friday, July 23rd through Sunday, July 25th. I'm super excited about that. Great. I mean, yeah. And they, here we go again. You know, that's uh, that's another challenge that you have. You don't just say, oh, yeah, I'll take the next the, the same dates next year or I want to expand them in this case. Yeah. Um, you know, you have all the logistics that have to be worked out. So. Um, how are you? How are you handling the refunds, Mike? As far as folks who you know maybe know they can't or, or have decided they won't be able to travel at that point. Right. Um, well, so you know there is a refund policy in place for 2020, but that's silly to try to enforce that at this point. So basically, what I'm doing with the Max Doc 2020 refund window is just extending it until further notice. I don't know what that's going to be yet, but there will be other editions of the max Tech newsletter and tweets and blog posts going out um, reminding people that we're postponing to next year i think most people got the message uh last weekend but we'll, we'll be reminding people sending out reminders don't forget that this is happening here's how we're handling it um everybody uh, as i said everybody to a t has said that's great we're looking forward to seeing you next year and that's fantastic uh, there was one person who said that they're moving out of the country at the end of the year and they're not going to be able to make it. Well, then that certainly sounds like a, a qualifying refund question. Uh, and so I, I issued them a refund. Um, it's it. Oh, look, we're still within the refund window of Max Doc anyway, but uh, I, I just decided I need to extend it um, until. I can I can safely determine that everybody who may need a refund can get it. Now, <clears throat> the the truth is that after that window closes, all these tickets are going to be automatically transferred to Max Doc 2021 anyway. So these 2021 tickets will have their own refund policy. So look, I, I'm not going to be draconian about it. I understand this is a. Uh, 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 an unusual situation, and I'm just going to handle it as requests come in. Um, but what I am doing, uh, un, uh, kind of the opposite of refunds, what I what I am doing is to make it up to folks. Uh, one of the things I did in my COVID-19 plan was I, I suspended the end of early bird program. In other words, the early bird price was going to be permanent until max stock weekend so that nobody had to feel pressured or rushed to make a decision to buy a ticket to max stock 2020 if they weren't ready to. So I, I decided I was going to extend the early bird program all the way up to, sorry about that, um, all the way up to um, max stock weekend was going to be early bird. So uh, that's, that's what I did. So when I had to postpone, I decided that uh, anybody uh, who purchases a max doc 2020 ticket and i'm making it very clear on the website that when when you do this this is what's going to happen anyone who purchases a max doc 2020 ticket by the end of what would have been max doc 2020 weekend so in other words by july 26 three months from now um or a little over right um anyone who buys it is going to get max doc 21 all three days of max doc 2021 at this year's two-day price, the early bird price even. Uh, and so that's just kind of another, you know, thank you for putting up with me. Uh, I know you might, maybe weren't sure that you could uh, make it to Max Stock 2020, or 2020, 2020. Um, if you can make it to 2021, here's your opportunity to save on that 2021 ticket by buying it at 2020's prices. 
so that's the other thing I'm doing too. Okay. So you're doing your best to turn this cancellation into a win, 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 which, you know, I, I applaud you for. We're definitely making lemonade. Good, good way to say it. Good way to say it. Yeah. yeah. So the web the website is Max Conference and Expo, but you also usually buy the the uh, the 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 yearly URLs too. Um, <laughs> I I do I do, but I don't know if I have that set up to forward yet. So I think Max Conference and Expo is probably the best place to go. Okay. Yeah. And of course, you know, follow Max on social media, um, Twitter. Um, at Max Talk Expo. At, at yeah. Max Talk Expo, you know, sign up for the newsletter when you get to the site, wherever the site happens to be for whichever year. But definitely sign up for the <laughs> newsletter. You know, make sure that you you stay up to date because um, I'm sure you will have more announcements of new plans moving forward. It's just a matter of figuring out because again, you know, now gee, now we're a year and a half out. Well, give or yeah, take. we're a year and a half so, out. Um, there are, if I can sneak one more thing in there, there are some plans yeah. for this year. There are some plans for this year. So yes, we're going to do all that fantastic stuff for 2021. Almost everybody who's uh, planned something special for next year. Um, I don't think I'm letting the cat out of the bag by saying this, but we were going to have live me, uh, Mac Geekab at Mac stock this year on Sunday morning. Uh, Dave has said, absolutely. He's on board for next year with that. Uh, we're of course going to have the my Mac game show back again this year. They're on board for next year. Um, so almost to a T everyone who had something special, oh, the max talk film fest, Wally Truinsky's max talk film fest. We're on board for next year. So if you started working on a film for this year, don't give up. You can still submit it for next year. Um, but, uh, so everything that we had planned is, tentatively scheduled to happen next year and then some it's just going to be bigger and better you know that's the main thing but i still wanted to do something this year i still wanted to see people even if i couldn't shake your hand even if i couldn't see you in person i still want to see people so my plan right now and this is why it's important to subscribe to the max tech newsletter because all these announcements are going to be made there first and then on twitter and uh everything else later but my plan is at the moment to do some sort of live event, not a, not a substitute for Max Talk 2020. There's no way you can substitute that virtually. I made that decision. I wasn't going to try to have a virtual Max Talk. That, that's, it, it just doesn't fit within what Max Talk is. But I'd still like to do something fun. That's what it is. Just a fun little thing. I want to do a Max Talk weekend. I'm, I'm tentatively thinking that what I'd like to do is get some of the, the presenters together who would have otherwise been on stage at next talk, see if they want to put together, you know, either little teaser talks about what they're going to present or something entirely different, maybe little 20 minute things, maybe longer, and maybe put together, you know, three hours on Saturday and three hours on Sunday and just do, um, something live, something free, you don't have to buy a ticket to it. Anybody who would have come to Max Talk would be welcome to attend. Anybody who wants to get a little, just a tiny little taste of what Max Talk was about can come. It's going to be completely open and free. And I already have a couple of folks who volunteered to help with that because I very, after I came up with these grandiose plans, I quickly realized that I can't run that whole thing myself. So I already had a couple of people who stepped up and said, absolutely, I, I, I want to help with that. Dave Ginsburg is one of them. So I'm um, not ready to officially announce that, to formally announce it, but I'm targeting July 25th and 26th, approximately noon to three each day, uh, just to have enough time for any of the presenters who want to join in or any of the attendees who want to join in, who maybe weren't planning on presenting, but have something really cool they want to share with the MaxTalk community get them on there and, and have just kind of a nice gigantic round table event. <laughs> uh, like I said, not, it's not an official substitute, just something fun to, so that we can all kind of get to see each other and commiserate a little bit. <laughs> okay. And so celebrate. That, 
So that means that once this goes official and you have more details, you got to come back and, and tell us about it. And that way we can spread the oh, word sure. again. Um, because we, you know, we, we constantly say with the road to Mac stock, will be back next year as well. Um, you know, count on that. Yes. Um, but the, the whole idea is to get people educated about what Mac stock is and, you know, why we're all so disappointed at this, but we understand, but now we're ne looking forward even more to 2021. Yes. Yeah. I shouldn't have said yes right away to road to max stock. I mean, that was pretty presumptuous of me, but I, I'm, I'm looking forward to road to max stock being back. Oh, it will, it will be back. I mean, and that's awesome. You know, frankly, that's one of the reasons that, that you didn't see it earlier this year, folks, you know, we try to start it pretty early and, yeah. you know, I, we knew that things were on the bubble. Everybody was hesitant. And so, you know, now, now we know what we're doing and now we yeah. move forward to 2021. It's pretty that's, simple. That's the plan. Yep. Pretty simple. I'm I'm excited about it. The Max Talk site will still say 2020 on it. Um, I very uh, gracefully scrawled out 2020 and put 2021 over it. Uh, but it's very clear on all the pages and on the the, the 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 ticket itself that it says if you buy this now, you're actually buying a ticket to Max Talk 2021. And uh, here's a link to the blog post that tells you what you're going to get. So. Uh, it, it, honestly, I've had a few people buy tickets already, and that's really exciting. Uh, and and I, I'll tell you uh, that one of them is someone who's never been to MacStock before. So that's, um, that's um, super cool. That is super terrific. Cool. That's terrific. Yeah. Well, it just goes to show that, you know, MacStock is someplace everybody wants. No, I won't say everybody, but I think any any Mac user or Apple tech user wants to come to. And so now we just have that much longer to convince them and maybe give them a, a little taste of what they might get when they get there. So good job. Yeah. Yeah. You know, it's it's going to be weird being this far ahead of the game uh, for Mac Stock 2021. It's not a mode I'm used to working in. So, I, you know, I'm used to starting up the next year's conference around – October, November, getting things in order, you know, getting the website up, getting the Cyber Monday tickets <laughs> for sale and all that kind of stuff. Now that's all kind of done. I just kind of have to change the dates to 2021 and I'm yeah. done. So yeah. now what is this grand procrastinator going to do? Uh, put your feet up, get a margarita, you know, watch the there grass grow. <laughs> or, or a nice cup of a nice cup of coffee in my Mac Stack 2018 mug. <laughs> you are Mr. Promotion. <laughs> No, um, I, I, I don't, I don't ever promote Mac stock. No, no, no. <laughs> no. no. Oh, Mike, sorry. Th no, th thank you for sharing. Um, you know, cause I know when, again, when I contacted you about this, it's like, well, do people really care? And it's like, yeah, I, th I think a lot of us care. You know, that's, that's been the difference between Mac stock and some other conferences. It's, it's a very personal conference. Um, a, a lot of people take ownership of pieces of Mac stock, even though they are quote unquote, just attendees. And I think that's one one of the things that makes a huge, huge difference between this and some others. So thank you for sharing. The, the Max Talk attendees, especially those who've been there every year, they really do feel like family to me. And Max Talk is a is family run. It's me. When 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 you're talking about who's who's organizing and running MaxDoc, it's me, but it's also the volunteers, it's the attendees, it's my wife, it's my dad, it's my daughter. It's very much a, a family run event, and uh, knowing that people understand and support the decision just means the world to me. Well, I I know they do, and the feedback you've gotten so far evidences it. So. But we will see you back here as soon as you are ready to announce the uh, the, the 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 online version of Mac Stock that you're planning, and we'll Mac Stock what... Live. Mac Stock Live. Yeah, there you go. There Mac you go. Stock Live. There you go. We just we just coined the phrase. There you go. There you go. Yeah, yeah. Um, thank you. Good to see you. Uh, take care of yourself. Stay healthy and stay safe. Thanks, Chuck. Good to see you, and thanks for having me on. This was fun. Yeah, we'll do it again. All right. Folks, I'm Chuck Joyner. This is Mac Voices. Same goes for you. Stay healthy, stay safe. Check out uh, MacStockConferenceAndExpo.com. Find out why you want to go and or come next, no, not next year. Yes, next year, 2021. I can't tell. I'm like, Mike, I got MacStock brain too. Until the next time, and as always, <laughs> thanks for watching. 
Visit macvoices.com for show notes and to connect with Chuck on social media. Get involved in our Facebook group or like our Facebook page and get more out of your Apple tech with Mac Voices Magazine, free on Flipboard and on the web. And if you find value in it all, consider supporting us through either our Patreon campaign at patreon.com slash macvoices or by making a one-time donation via the PayPal link on our front page and in the show notes of each episode. You will join these fine people who help bring you Mac Voices. Advertising handled by Backbeat Media at backbeatmedia.com. Bandwidth provided by Cashfly at cashfly.com.